everyone, I hope you're having a great day. And for today's case, we're going to be talking about the Craigslist killer. And before I get started, I did want to give a trigger warning because this case does discuss graphic details and um, does talk about self-harm and suicide. And if you or anyone that you know is struggling, um, please reach out to your uh, support network, which could be family, friends, um, teachers, coworkers, anyone, um, or if you don't feel comfortable talking to um, people close to you, there are resources available. And the um, National Suicide Hotline number did uh, change to make it easier to remember. And that number is now 988, um, which that is active across the United States. And um, it says the new shorter number will make it easier for people, again, to remember and to access mental health crisis services. Um, the previous number was 1-800-273-TALK, and um, the numbers for TALK that are 8255. So again, it's 1-800-273-8255, or the word TALK. Um, that number will continue to function um, indefinitely. And then the website is 988lifeline.org. Additionally, for anyone who may be in um, a crisis, you can also text the word HOME, which is H-O-M-E, to the number 741-741 um, from anywhere in the United States. And um, at any time, you can connect to a crisis counselor it's free 24-7 uh, support at uh, your fingertips. And then there is a live trained crisis counselor who receives the text messages and then will respond um, all from the secure online platform. Again, um, if you do need help, please reach out and there are resources available. And um, now getting into today's case, again, it's about the Craigslist killer. And that case happened in the year 2009, so it's been a while ago um, since that happened. And it occurred during a seven-day time frame. And what the Craig's, what Craigslist is, it's a website where um, people can post things, uh, ads such as um, stuff they're trying to sell from their house, like a washer and dryer, um, looking for roommates, uh, searching for jobs. And the uh, website describes um, it as an American classified advertisements website with uh, sections devoted to jobs, housing, uh, for sale items, uh, items wanted, service, community service, gigs, resumes, and discussion forums. And then um, a lot of times people um, may meet other people online, but not necessarily um, know who those people are. And um, meeting up with people online is definitely common these days, especially during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic that uh, where people were at home and couldn't really go out and meet people. Uh, meeting online uh, helped with talking to other people or um, building relationships that they were missing. And um, so these days it's even more common for people to meet one another online. Um, sometimes people do find success with long-term relationships and at other times um, those encounters may um, become scary or um, not what someone was thinking may happen. And um, before dating sites, uh, was it included the uh, Craigslist personal section and then at least one alleged killer named Philip Markoff and he used that to prove that you can't always trust people that you meet on the internet because uh, they can present themselves in one way to uh, people online and then actually be someone different when you meet them in person which uh, can definitely be a scary thing um, and then Craigslist, it did uh, and does create a sense of anonymity. Um, and it's been reported that there have been at least 131 Craigslist murders since the year 2007. And going into the background of uh, Philip Markov, 
He was born on February the 12th of 1986, so he was 23 years old uh, during the time of the Craigslist killings. And he was born in Cheryl, New York, um, which was the former site of the Onita Silver Factory. And he also went by the name Phil, so just a shortened version for uh, Philip. He attended school at Vernon Verona Cheryl High School, where he was a member of the National Honor Society, the History Club, the Youth Court, and then the school's bowling and golf team. So he was involved in different clubs while he was in uh, high school. Philip uh, graduated in the year 2004, and then he was the son of Susan, um, whose maiden name was Haynes, and she was believed to be an educator turned casino worker. And then his father, Richard Markoff, uh, was a dentist in Syracuse, New York. He, Philip also had an older brother by the name of Jonathan Markoff, and then a half-sister whose father was um, Susan's second husband, Gary Carroll, and Gary was a banker. Um, and then Philip attended the State University of New York, um, University of Albany, which is also goes by the name of SUNY. He um, was a pre-med student and received a bachelor's degree in biology. And then he, um, while he was there, he met a fellow pre-med student by the name of Megan McAllister. And um, she was a native of New Jersey in the United States. And um, he met her in the year 2005. And when they met, Megan was a senior and Philip was a sophomore. They became involved after they met, um, or while well, they met while they were both volunteers at the Albany Medical Center Hospital emergency room. And then their first date was a few months later on November 11th of 2005. Um, the couple became engaged three years later, and then their wedding was set for August 14th of 2009 in Long Beach, or excuse me, Long Branch, New Jersey. And then Megan was going to begin a medical school in the fall of 2009. Um, Philip graduated SUNY Albany in 2007. And then from there, he applied for medical schools to become a doctor after taking the required MCAT um, test. He graduated um, college summa cum laude, so he was very smart and then he finished college in three years before going to medical school. And then after they, Megan and Philip finished their undergraduate studies, they moved to um, Boston, Massachusetts to attend medical school at Boston University. They lived in Quincy, Massachusetts in the High Point apartment complex. Philip was a second year medical student at Boston University at the um, school of, excuse me, he was a second year medical student at Boston University School of Medicine at the time of the crimes. And then he had no criminal record. And then it was said that he had a dedicated and loving fiance who was uh, Megan McAllister. And then he was suspended from the school after criminal charges were filed against him. And then just going a little bit deeper into um, his background, it was said to uh, everyone in his life, he was an, in, was an incredibly busy medical student living on a tight budget and with little time to himself. His teachers believed he was brilliant and then his fiance believed him to be an, an incredible soul and a pacifist so that he couldn't hurt anybody. And then to his surviving victims, it was said that he will always be the monster who took joy in traumatizing them. And it was um, described that in some of uh, Philip's past pictures that uh, when it was shown that it was said uh, he was a speckled teenager who grins broadly in some of his photos and then in others he offers a blank expression. But in all of his yearbook images, Philip uh, Markov's thick blonde hair is neatly combed and not a single hair was out of place. And, and then 
Again, he grew up on um, Thurston Terrace in Sherrill, New York, outside of Syracuse. And it was a community of just more than 3,000 people in upstate New York. Um, he grew up in a two-story colonial house with blue siding. Uh, the population was 3,150 people. And then there was a, a welcome sign that says um, that it was the smallest city in New York State. And his family moved there into the neighborhood in the mid-1980s. And for the most part, they kept to themselves, um, neighbors would say. Uh, many said the family seemed normal, but a bit quiet. And then some remember Philip shooting a basketball in the driveway, but no one could uh, recall that there was a rowdy party from um, them on the block. It was said that uh, they're just terrific people, said longtime neighbor Dorothy Guider, who was 53 at the time. Um, she said it was a shock regarding um, Philip having charges brought against him. Um, she said when Philip, or excuse me, when Philip was a toddler, his parents divorced, and then his father Richard remarried and took his son, his brother uh, Jonathan to Syracuse, and um, Philip lived with his mother Susan, who again remarried Gary Carroll, and they had a daughter together in 1991 by the name of Haley, when uh, Philip was five. It said the couple split several years ago and then Haley lived with Gary. No one in the small community remembered Markov's parents or step-parents uh, participating at his school activities or showing up often at the community um, activity center where he excelled in the youth bowling leagues. His stepfather, um, several residents recalled, used to bring Haley around to sell Girl Scout cookies or to go trick-or-treating on Halloween, and then he did most of the grocery shopping. Uh, if you saw the family walking down the side of the road, nobody would know them, said Clint Smith, who graduated a year after Philip uh, from Vernon Verona Cheryl High School. On uh, Thurston Terrace, a well-kept uh, block where Markoff lived, in a gray house trimmed in white with a big uh, lawn in the back. The family's next door neighbor, Molly Weddle said, they were very quiet and kept to themselves. There were never any bother. And then Sonia Haluska, who taught Philip English in high school and lived uh, right behind the family, described him as the nicest young man, polite and respectful with a good sense of humor. And then Philip's stepfather, uh, Gary, also once worked at a toy store over the Christmas holidays, neighbor Mrs. Guider said. And Miss, uh, Mrs. Mar or Philip's mother uh, also was a doll collector who did not work during his childhood. But then later she worked in the um, gift store at the Turning Stone Casino outside of town. Some neighbors also recalled Susan, Philip's mom, um, sorting through the neighbor's trash, once pulling out valuable postage stamps that she later sold. Uh, Miss Guider said that every little bit helped, adding that she um, had no idea that the mother's second marriage had broken up until she saw her selling off her doll collection at her own garage sale. And then the family occasionally had attended uh, church services together at uh, St. Helena Roman Catholic Church in Cheryl, though um, their neighbor, Miss Skyder, said that Gary Carroll and Haley uh, more often would go together without the rest of the family. And then just a few weeks prior to the time when charges were brought against Philip, um, Mrs. Guider's husband, Hugh, spotted Gary Carroll in church and then um, Gary had mentioned that his former stepson had enrolled at Boston Medical School and that they were very proud of him. And spending um, most of her children's early years at home with them, uh, Philip's mother eventually again took a job at the um, resort and casino gift shop where she still worked at the time of the crimes. She was a regular member at meetings of the local quilting guild and enjoyed making crafts and when Philip was in first grade she made the tissue boxes for his classroom. Uh, Gary Carroll and Susan Haynes ended their marriage in 2004 
about the time that Philip graduated from high school, several neighbors said. And then Gary moved to downtown Cheryl with Haley, who was a student at uh, the school during the time when charges were brought against Philip. In Philip's senior year book, he listed Susan and Gary as his parents, but didn't mention Richard Markoff, who lived in Lafayette, uh, right outside of Syracuse. And then early on, it was described that Philip was a bright uh, child, former teachers and neighbors would say. He excelled in math and science and was able to read early. And Terry Law, who was his first grade teacher at E.A. McAllister Elementary School remembers Philip's uh, white blonde hair and his quiet nature and sense of humor. Um, Terry said, I just remember him being a boy, bright boy. He had an early fascination with money, coins, and trading cards, and then caused no trouble in the neighborhood, neighbors said. And it was described that uh, struggling to identify a grainy mugshot they saw on early morning television shows, neighbor, um, neighbors on Thurston Terrace said that they were stunned to learn that Philip was the suspected Craigslist killer. I just don't understand it, Mrs. Guider said. I never in a thousand years would think it. Um, and then Philip's high school yearbook paid homage to his penchant for gambling. As a senior, he wrote, I bequeath my poker playing skills to Andy Finley so he wouldn't, so he won't lose his dad's house. At his high school, his former English teacher said he, she was stunned when she saw Markoff be, had been picked up for the arrest. I saw his picture and that beautiful smile. I knew it was Phil, Sonia Haluska told Good Morning America. I just couldn't believe it was Phil. He was a bright student, so friendly, polite, a teacher's pet. I thought it would be some derelict, she said, not this young man, because he's just such a good person. And then, so people thought he was a great person, uh, very smart, but then there were signs of a different personality that Philip showed to others. And again, he graduated from high school in 2004 and then went to SUNY Albany to study biology in college. It was said that by the time he arrived at SUNY Albany, he had taken so many advanced placement courses that he sailed through in three years. People who lived with him remarked that there were times when he would spend up to eight hours a day alone at his computer, and he rarely, if ever, talked about his family. He was a biology major and very active in a co-ed pre-med fraternity, uh, Phi Delta Epsilon. And within the fraternity, Philip was an eager mentor and volunteer to some. He came to a Halloween party once dressed as a mammogram machine, which is kind of, um, I guess could be said, could be odd <laughs> to some. Um, but then to others, he was someone who held back his rear, real thoughts and behaved awkwardly and often inappropriately. So the dressing up as a mammogram machine, that could be seen as being inappropriate. Um, according to one classmate, uh, what he was on the inside wasn't necessarily what he was on the outside. He would tell pretty girls he was afraid of flunking and get them to spend hours tutoring him. Then he would ace the exam. So again, he was very intelligent. Um, then he would say he uh, thought he would flunk, but he would ace his exams just to be around girls. And then in 2005, he showed a disturbing roughness to fellow student Morgan Houston. Uh, Morgan said that before their cram sessions, Philip would study for hours and he was a better student than her, but then he pretended to not know the material so he could spend time with her. Uh, Morgan said that she had a close call with him, uh, one of her study buddies, when the two attended the State University of New York at Albany after a night of partying, which frightened her. Um, once, when a group of Phi Delta Epsilon members came home from a night of drinking, Philip, um, under the guise of walking her to her door, he pushed her up against a wall through a doorway and tried to kiss her late at night on campus. And then in spite of her efforts to stop him, she tried to push him away while saying, um, no, Phil, what are you doing? We, we're just friends. I don't like you. Stop. And no, Phil, get off me. 
but he didn't let up until a male friend of her pulled him off. He had to physically pull uh, Philip off of her, Houston said. Um, she said that she wasn't strong enough to push him away, but that, again, a mutual friend passing by came to her aid. And she said that, thankfully, Philip was not on top of her. Um, she said that that was the only time that Philip was aggressive towards her. She had a boyfriend at the time and said that Philip's come ons made her feel uncomfortable. It was the way he said it, but she blamed the incident on alcohol and did not bring it up again. She noted at some points he really wasn't comfortable in his own skin. And um, Houston remembers that as a sophomore, Markoff was pretty excited about meeting McAllister, who was described as a strawberry blonde senior in pre -men. He was saying, I met this great girl, she's older, and who was a few years older than Philip, um, asked him out on their first date. And then after seeing each other for three years, uh, Philip proposed to Megan on a beach. And then it was also said that he proposed to her on a horse-drawn carriage in Connecticut. In college, they uh, both basically kept their social lives separate, but then they were both equally serious about becoming doctors and they both enjoyed uh, gambling at Foxwood Resorts. A uh, lab partner who worked closely with Philip at Boston University would also tell re later tell reporters that she was troubled by his profound mood swings. So then again, here we can see two ends of the spectrum of his personality um, where some saw him growing up as a nice person, uh, friendly, and then when he was at college, he showed aggression and mood swings towards others. Um, and then now, at, during the time of the crimes, again, he was 23. Um, so again, Philip, whom his former neighbors remember as a nice lad, which it was stated, uh, was accused of murdering Julissa Brisman, a New York woman who had advertised massage services on Craigslist. Um, and then going back again about his um, character, when pressed for details about Philip's character, uh, friends and acquaintances described a young man who was competitive but not cutthroat, politically opinionated but not confrontational, nerdy but not painfully so. Several former teachers said that Mr. Markov had shown no signs of emotional turmoil. Uh, he was a model student, said Sonia Haluska, a former teacher. And um, growing up, the bowling alley was the biggest draw for teenagers, and Philip was avid enough to practice there daily. He was so intent on being good, a good bowler, that unsatisfied with the grip, he had his bowling ball re-drilled. Everything had to be just so, said one childhood friend. Miss Haluska said that high school students in Cheryl, New York, looked forward to turning 18 so they could gamble at the nearby casino. And then Philip, whom several friends remembered as an exuberant poker player, would round up members of his bowling team after a match and say, let's go to the casino, said Jessica Schuerman, 22 at the time, who was a year behind Mr. Markoff at Vernon Verona Cheryl High School. Later at the University of Albany, Philip was a member of the College Republicans and traveled to Washington in 2004 to hear speeches by Ann Coulter and Carl Rove. We were surrounded by such a left-wing student body and he was more like me. He didn't really share those sentiments, said one classmate, Jonathan Zierler, who said he had accompanied Mr. Markov on the trip he said he was a traditionalist as far as things like men and women's roles in society. He was a throwback from a more conservative era. Uh, Mr. Zierler could not remember um, Philip ever having a girlfriend until he met Megan in um, his sophomore year at Albany when again they volunteered in an emergency room. And then again, Philip graduated summa cum laude in 2007 with his degree in biology. So he was very smart. Uh, his hard work in college paid off, and then he was accepted to the Boston University School of Medicine, 
where 11,000 applicants compete for only 150 slots. And then it was said, on a handsome brick campus in Boston's trendy South End, Mr. Markoff more or less blended in, several classmates said. He seemed like the rest of us in med school, Shana Roan, a classmate said, making ends meet with some skeletons in the closet, nothing out of the ordinary. Another classmate uh, who spoke on condition of anonymity said, Markoff was pretty passive. The classmate added, he seemed a pretty chill guy. He seemed to be definitely smarter than the other students. In Quincy, Massachusetts, uh, Philip and Megan paid about uh, $1,400 a month for a one bedroom apartment in High Point, an upscale complex with a pool and a clubhouse for social gatherings. But Philip apparently did not spend much time socializing. Uh, several neighbors said he was rarely home, and when he was, he would say a quick hello before locking the door behind him. And then the tuition at Boston University Medical School, where he was in his second year, was $45,000, so it was pretty expensive. Um, he grew up in middle class and had planned a costly wedding, so he had a lot of expenses um, coming up. And then he also liked to gamble. Um, Philip had never been in trouble with the law before. And then on August 14th of 2009, he and Megan, who was also planning to attend medical school, were going to be married in what was described as a big fairy tale wedding on the New Jersey shore near her hometown in Little Silver, New Jersey. Their wedding website detailed their four year romance. Their meeting as volunteers at Albany Hospital and then his proposal um, on a beach in Maine. And then again, going back, there were um, differing uh, descriptions of how we proposed. So one said a horse-drawn carriage in Connecticut, and then this said a um, beach in Maine. And then it was said they were going to have a Springsteen cover band, the B Street Band, was scheduled to play at the beach side reception. Um, and then again, more expenses for, with their wedding. It was said that McAllister's gown by Vera Wang had already been purchased, as had the bridesmaid's dresses, and listed on the bridal registry were a set of luggage worth $1,600 and then Vera Wang goblets. It was described that to teachers and kids alike, uh, Philip was a nerd who excelled academically. He did not have a girlfriend, and then he was not one of the most popular, Haluska, a former teacher, said. He had his own group of friends, more interested in computers and science, like Trekkies, so like uh, the show Star Trek, uh, people were called Trekkies. He was a member of the school's youth court, where student uh, judges meted out punishment to underage offenders in lieu of having them attend family court. And then again, he was also on the golf and bowling teams, and it was described that beneath his nondescript demeanor, he was intense and competitive. And then in his high school yearbook, um, he bequeaths his poker playing skills to a friend and predicts that everyone else will bowl 300 before a certain one of his classmates does. Uh, he was a pretty even tempered, he was pretty even tempered and quiet except he would always get a little too mad at me if I beat him, said Todd Brown, uh, who played golf with Philip in junior high school. And then the town Cheryl, uh, New York, uh, was in shock and that one of its own could be accused of murder. Uh, crime there is stealing a bike, Lisa Perry, a lifetime resident said. And speaking of um, Markoff's mother, Molly Waddle said, Sue was quite devastated. She doesn't understand what happened. She said it's so out of character. And then in the town of Cheryl, uh, it was said that the Turning Stone Casino was uh, huge and controversial. It was the largest, uh, it was the county's largest employer, uh, but because it was located on an Indian reservation, it did not pay taxes. And it was described that it had a nickname like Eyesore, said Phillips High School classmate Andrew Hookway. Uh, and Andrew Hookway had also at the time started a Facebook support group called 
Philip Markoff is innocent until proven guilty. And for several years, uh, Philip's mother, who worked at the casino selling cigarettes and aspirin at the kiosk, uh, which is also where at the casino Markoff learned to play um, poker and his friends continued to drink and play blackjack at Turning Stone when they came home from breaks at college, but they didn't go over their um, self-imposed limit of $200. Uh, some nights they lost that much, but never more, said a close high school friend. And since Markoff's arrest, uh, Boston University Medical School went into complete lockdown mode. One instructor said, it's posted on the internet um, all over the university, don't talk to the media. And then copy, copies of the Boston University paper that carried the story about Philip being um, accused of the Craigslist killing. It says the paper, um, were they were mysteriously unavailable at the medical school. Later, the alternative weekly, the Boston Phoenix reported, an anonymous admissions office employee told the Daily Free Press that the papers were purposely hidden because of their content, uh, which would reflect negatively on the school. Tiffany Montgomery, who dropped out of the medical school, was uh, at the time Markoff's lab partner, and they shared an anatomy locker. So she spent uh, several, uh, many hours with him in class. She felt he was disturbed, perhaps even suicidal. Um, I mentioned that to three other classmates and everyone blew it off. According to Tiffany, uh, Philip would go for long periods without communicating with those around him. Uh, you never knew with Phil what you were going to get. She said, he wouldn't look at you when he talked to you. He often seemed tired and depressed. He came in once at 5 a.m. looking like death warmed over. It was the morning um, of a big exam. He said he had just uh, driven in from New Jersey because he had a fight with his girlfriend and had to deal with it. Uh, he could barely bring himself to speak. And at a party they attended, um, she said, Philip drank a lot and continued to flirt with people who were really not interested. They weren't flirting back, but he would just keep it up he had no real idea of himself. He couldn't read body language. Um, and then a little bit more about um, Philip and Megan. Again, they were um, planning on getting married in between their second and third years of medical school. However, uh, Philip and Megan weren't planning on being together for months after their wedding. Uh, following the honeymoon, they were going to live apart and she had been admitted to a medical school in the Caribbean where classes were going to start at the end of August. And she had planned to go straight through in 14 or 15 months and then continue her studies in the United States. And then meanwhile, he would uh, return to finish uh, Boston University Medical School. And then they had planned on getting together during their breaks um, from school. And it was said that Philip did not seem like a um, murderer. He had grown up in a small town in upstate New York in a middle-class household. Again, friends and classmates would later describe him as serious, well-behaved, and active in extracurricular activities. Um, no one could have predicted that beneath a well-bred um, exterior lurked the dark mind of a calculated killer. From the outside, Philip appeared to lead an ideal life he was a well-to-do medical student with a bride-to-be. Indeed, there appeared to be no indication that he would turn into the Craigslist killer, except uh, perhaps one. Again, he was um, in, he had a debt of $130,000 um, while he was a medical student. Um, that was from student loans, and then he also enjoyed gambling. It was said that he made frequent visits to Foxwood Casino, um, which is where he was headed the day that he was arrested. And then going a little bit more about um, his personality, he has different sides of his personality. Um, he presented one face uh, and personality to his friends and family and classmates, and then another when he was committing his crimes. Uh, he was described by the media 
as the Craigslist killer because the Craigslist killer was alleged to have met his victims through ads placed on the um, site Craigslist. And then uh, two of Philip's alleged victims were offering erotic services on Craigslist. And he did show a different personality while he was online. Um, so again, he was a gambler who frequented casinos and then had his debt of $130,000. Uh, his crimes were calculated and then he began surfing his options on Craigslist a full year before his uh, first reported crime. He, uh, it was said, initially trolled, flirted and exchanged uh, sexual pictures with a person who identified as a transvestite um, in an effort perhaps to groom an initial victim. And then, however, the person that he was exchanging emails with uh, never met him face to face. Philip was interested in, it was said, homosexual uh, sadomasochism. So with uh, sadomasochism, he enjoyed uh, pain. One of his other internet profiles on a website called Alt, which is A-L-T dot com, a personals website described as for the uh, quote unquote, very adventurous, uh, it was said that Philip showed interest in chains, collars, leashes, and experimentation with transvestites, among others. And then his um, other interactions online, uh, almost a year before a spree of robberies that targeted women and would leave one person dead, Philip began to reach out to people on Craigslist. Um, the messages revealed a different side to him um, and not a mild-mannered medical student engaged to be married, uh, but it was said um, as an individual thirsty for outside sexual encounters. Um, on uh, Craigslist in the free of charge casual encounter section, uh, there were categories um, by the name of T, the letter T, uh, 4M and M4T, which stood for transvestites for men and men for transvestites, which was listed city by city. And in late April of 2009, after Philip's arrest, Jeff Rawson of NBC News broke a story on the Today Show about um, Philip soliciting a transvestite in Boston. Um, and then it said in a series of emails, they had exchanged explicit photos, um, including one that allegedly from Philip that couldn't be shown on national television. And police sources confirmed to the um, TV show site NBC, that channel, that uh, the hard drive of Philip's computer, which they had seized, also contained messages to that person. And then it was later reported that Philip had sent messages and photos to multiple men who posted ads on Craigslist labeled the M4T or men looking for transvestites. Um, and then one of the first uh, messages was the subject line that said, Hey, sexy. On May 2nd of 2008 at 12.29 a.m., the name uh, Philip Markov came up with the email address uh, sex addict 5385 at yahoo.com and he was replying to Craigslist personal number 664-395-223. It said, I just saw your CL or Craigslist ad message me on AIM, which AIM used to be an instant messaging site um, like a long time ago. And then it said my um, in, message me on AIM and the name was my, the number one name, the number one, it was the number one Phil. So my name is Phil. Um, and then AIM again is described as America online instant messaging, which doesn't display spaces in a screen name. So that's probably why the number one was in between my name is Phil. And then the message said, I am 6'3", a 22-year-old grad student. Along with the message, he sent his picture, um, which the person he was talking to verified the photo um, by going to Philip's Facebook page and then seeing the same uh, picture of him smiling in a blue and white striped shirt with a small um, drapery in the background. 
And then at 12.33 a.m., the response was sent, um, you got any more pics done? Um, and then a few minutes later, a uh, sex addict who was Phil sent two attachments. It said a picture of the buff upper torso of a tall man with the head cut off and a picture of an erect penis with a ruler held alongside it, alongside it measuring eight inches. Uh, the person that Philip talked to replied at 12.39 a.m. with a picture of himself in short shorts holding a camera and said, here's one of me, I will message on AIM in a few. At 12.46 a.m., uh, Philip got back, sorry babe, I'm going to sleep. Um, it was said that the person was offended and at 12.50 a.m. responded, not your type or just not tonight, have a good sleep, maybe I'll catch you later. Almost nine hours later, um, sex addict or Phil picked up the thread, hey, I'm still interested, do you have any more pics? What are you into and what are your stats? What are you doing tonight? At 9.34 a.m., the person sent two more pictures, but he never heard back and Philip was gone. And then nearly nine months later, on January 27th of 2009, at 1 p.m., in response to another posting from the person that Philip had been talking to, um, who this time was using the screen name Hot Tongue, uh, a message came from someone with the initials PM and then the screen name um, Sex Addict 53885. So a second eight had been added to his initial name. And it said, Hey, I'm a 22 year old graduate student, 6'3, 205, good build, blonde, blue eyes, eight inches cut. Let me know what else you want to see or know about. Do you have any more pics? What else are you looking for? And then um, Sex Addict did not realize who Hot Tongue was, but he was quickly filled in. At 1.03 p.m., Hot Tongue told him that they had chatted before, and he said, I know you are um, a BU grad student. You're still hot, but I don't like getting stood up. And then Sex Addict apologized in another email, and Hot Tongue asked, have you gotten any this semester? Uh, Sex Addict responded, LOL a little. Uh, Hot, tongue, Hot Tongue was willing to give him another chance, but no reply came back from um, the sex addict 53885 until 10.38 p.m. And it said, hey, I just saw your message, still looking, where do you live? Um, I did not respond, the person said, I was in bed. Once again, their exchange didn't result in a meeting. And then it was said that Philip even um, once um, posted as a female under the name um, Ebony Masseuse looking to service male clients. And it was said that um, whether or not that work, the ruse worked uh, to result in an encounter is unclear. On um, April 22nd, um, 2009, two days after Phillips' arrest, the Albany Times Union reported that when it Googled his Boston phone number, one of the four hits was a remnant of an undated Craigslist posting for an ebony erotic masseuse. And according to the article, the um, posting title and preview reads, Craigslist ebony erotic masseuse, taking my last appointment, 24. Why get a massage if you're going to be uncomfortable? I'm sure I will leave you satisfied. My donation is 150. Contact me at, um, and then it listed a phone number. And then it said in Craigslist speak, a donation is the euphemism for the price of a sexual service. And then it was stated that there were several possible explanations for um, the posting. One was that um, Philip did it to lure, uh, quote unquote, Johns to come to him. And or he did it after he got a gun to lure people to a hotel room so he could uh, rob them and then he may have robbed some people that way and then or uh, someone else did it and put in the wrong number um, jake wark a press officer for the boston um, district attorney would not comment to the times union except to say that uh, craigslist was cooperate cooperating with the investigation uh, work would not comment about the evidence regarding the person going by the name hot tongue saying um, not even approach relevance to their case. 
or saying, excuse me, it not, did not even approach relevance to their case. But then a police source said that um, Markov's tastes were wide and varied. Um, and then a crime blogger uncovered evidence suggesting that Markov once applied as a newcomer for a newcomer for sadomasochistic experiences. Um, Detective Stephen Schwalm of the uh, Washington DC Vice Squad said, uh, Craigslist didn't mean to start out creating a cyber brothel, but that's what it grew into. And then uh, Philip soon began hunting the personal ads, occasionally posing as a female or searching for others who identified as transvestites. Um, all discussions he had were sexual in nature, and then he always wanted to meet up with them. Uh, authorities were never able to discover if he actually met up with any of the people he spoke to online at the time. Um, and then eventually after a year of practice, it was said that Philip uh, came up with a plan that he felt confident with. And uh, Philip started looking at escorts and women and women offering private massages for a fee on Craigslist. He was confident with the promise of money that he could get the women to meet him anywhere. Um, he would meet them at hotels and then only um, halfway disguising himself from the cameras with a baseball cap. He wasn't careful and then it was said it was only a matter of time before he was caught. And again, Craigslist created that sense of anonymity um, and Philip thought sex workers would be easy prey. He got thrills from um, power, sex, and control. And then psychologist Casey Jordan described Philip's uh, public persona being at war with his deeper desires. She said, a double life in and of itself doesn't cause people to rob or kill, but it can cause what is described as a fractured identity. Um, and that result can, or that conflict can result in violence. And um, Philip used a fake ID to buy a gun in New Hampshire, which was the same gun that was found in his apartment. And now um, going um, more deeply into his victims, uh, who they were, he had three victims and their names were Trisha Leffler, Julissa Brisman, and Cynthia Melton, which I wasn't able to find any pictures of Cynthia when I was um, doing a search. And for uh, Trisha Leffler, she was a um, she was 29 years old at the time and was Philip's first victim. She offered personal um, massage services and agreed to meet him at the Weston um, Copley Place Hotel in Boston. And then it said as soon as they met at the hotel, uh, she was held at gunpoint, uh, tied up, and then Philip gagged her and robbed her of everything of value that she had. Um, and then unfortunately, they didn't use their real names when talking to each other and making the appointment, so she couldn't identify him by name. And then she did have an interview with um, the TV show 48 Hours Mystery, dated April 25th of 2009, um, which I'll read the um, transcript to you. and. Um, it was said again that um, she um, was a Las Vegas masseuse and again advertised her services on Craigslist. Um, it was said that she was bound with a plastic cord and robbed at gunpoint at the Boston Hotel by Philip. And then, um, so starting with the uh, transcript of her interview with 48 Hour uh, Mystery. Uh, the first question was, so Trisha, if you could do, if you could do the thing that we talked about, first identify yourself and what your relationship is in this case. She said, I am Trisha Leffler. I am the first victim robbed in the Philip Markoff Craigslist murder case. And then it was asked, um, all right, so Trisha, give me a little bit. Um, you live here in Las Vegas and how to, did you end up in Boston? Um, how did you end up in a hotel room at all? How did this all come about? And she said she went there for work. Um, she was asked how she met Philip. And she said that she had placed an ad on Craigslist and he called her um, number off of Craigslist and then asked uh, what part of town she was in, what location she was in, and that he said that he'd like to come see her and spend some time with her. 
Um, so then she was asked um, that if she had decided to go to Boston. Um, so how was it that you and Philip ended up meeting? And she said, like I said originally, I placed an ad on Craigslist. My number was on there. He ended up calling um, her number and asking um, where she was located. And then she gave him her location. And then 20 minutes later, he called her when he got to the Westin Hotel. Um, and then she was asked about what she said in her ad. Um, she said it was basically along the lines of, if you'd like to come some, spend some time with you know, a blonde um, that you would like to, um, but then she was cut off and asked, um, so what did you write in the ad? I mean, obviously you lived in Las Vegas, but did you say, I'll be in Boston? What did it say in the ad? Um, she said, it was just, I was in Boston already, and that if you'd like to come spend some time with a sweet blonde, give me a call so we can spend some time together. That's, ba that's basically the ins and outs of it. Um, she was asked the ad, obviously, if someone was on that ad, they would know where, they would know what they were looking for. And she said, yes. Um, she was asked, tell me a little bit about the assumption was already there. He knew when he got there, what was the assumption that both you knew what was going to happen that night. And she said, he was just going to pay me for my time. Um, and asked, how did you get to the hotel? Were you, was this something that he was arranging to pay for? She said, no, not at all. And asked, tell me a little bit about that. Like, what were the expectations from you and him? She said, I mean, I just, I was in the hotel room and I just placed an ad on Craigslist and he called off my ad. Um, I mean, that's there. It wasn't anything like previously discussed or anything from the time that he called me to the time that I met him. It was probably a half an hour. And then um, she said it was really quick. And then um, it, she was asked what was what he was like on the phone? What did he say to her? And was there any talk of um, the money? And she said, he just asked me how much it was for, you know, I have a half hour rate and an hour rate. He asked how much it was for the half hour and the hour. And then she told him it was $200 for the hour. And then he said, OK, that sounds an hour sounds fine. And then about a half an hour later, he called her again when he got to the hotel. Um, so then she was asked, and you basically said, this is my room, you can come up. She said, no, he called when he got there and I met him by the elevator. And then um, she does that for security purposes. And um, she said, obviously, if I don't feel comfortable, then I'll just walk away from the person. So if she's meeting them at the elevators and then um, they don't that way, they don't know exactly what her room number is. Um, I just tell them if I'm not comfortable, I just tell them no thanks. And then she was asked if she felt safe and she said, yeah. Um, and then she said to describing why she felt comfortable. She said his appearance was just he was tall, a good looking guy. I mean, I felt when I first laid eyes on him, I was comfortable because it was, you know, just regular, just a regular looking guy. And then she was asked if she could trust um, someone, if he felt like she was someone that he could, she could trust in her room that night. She said, not really, it's not really a trust issue. It's kind of like, I don't know what the word, kind of like, you know, get to know the person a little bit um, and spend some time with me. Uh, let's get to know each other type of stuff, you know. And then she was asked, you didn't feel like you were in danger immediately with him? And she said, no, not immediately, no. And then she was asked um, to, to tell why she didn't feel like she was in danger. She said, because I mean, he looked regular to me. He didn't look like he had any other tendencies other than just to spend a little time and then leave. Um, so she was asked what he said when he came to meet her. She said, I just said hi. He said hi. And I said, I just motioned to him to follow me. And because I really don't want to talk out in the hallway and you know what not. So we went into the room. And as soon as I had closed the door and turned around, he was just standing inside the door and pulled out the gun. Um, and then she was asked what was going through her mind when he uh, did that. She said, I was a little nervous, like I immediately started shaking, like my heart started beating real fast. I started shaking 
and then she was asked what he said to her. Um, he told her to lie down on the ground and then she wasn't sure what was going to happen at that point. Um, and then he was saying to her um, to lie, lay down and then she did. And then at that point he put the gun back in his pocket once, um, and then once she laid down, he stepped behind her and then kneeled on the ground with one knee in the middle and between her legs and told her to put her hands behind her back, which she did. And then he tied her up one hand at a time. And then she was asked what he was saying to her. Um, she said, I was basically saying, you know, you don't have to do all this. You don't, you don't have to tie me up. You know, I'll give you whatever you want. You don't have to tie me up. And he basically told me, if you just be quiet, you know, no harm's going to come to you. And then she was asked, is he telling you what he wants something at this point from you? And she said, no, as soon as he tied me up, he stepped back in front of me and pulled out some black leather gloves and put the black leather gloves on and then asked her where her money was. And she asked what she did, um, what are the instructions at that point? She said, I told him they were in my purse and he walked over there, um, over to, there was a desk in the room. I had my makeup case on the desk and he picked it up and said, in here, I said, no. My purse is in the top drawer of the entertainment center. And that's when he walked over and took the purse out of the entertainment center. And then um, he opened her purse and then immediately went for the money. He put the money in his pocket and then he knelt down on the floor and was uh, rifling through her purse. He took out her wallet and then started going through the wallet. Um, she said like taking each credit card out, asking me what kind of credit cards they were. I told him they were prepaid and there was no money on them. Then he took out, um, she said, my bank card. He asked me what my PIN number was on my bank card. And at that time, my adrenaline was rushing so much, I couldn't think of a lie. So I gave him the PIN number. He told me that better be the PIN number. I was gonna, there was gonna be a problem later. Um, she said, whatever that meant. And then after he took all the credit cards out and put them in his pocket, he then took, um, she said my wallet, whole wallet and shoved it in his pocket. And then at that moment, I realized that my ID was in the wallet and I asked him if he could please leave my ID so I could get home. And then she said, and he took it out and studied it for a good minute, like he was memorizing my address and then threw it down with all the rest of the stuff. And then because I told him that the credit cards were prepaid credit cards, um, I asked him, if he could please leave me at least one of the credit cards so I could also get home with, you know, with a credit card. And he said, I thought you said there wasn't any money on him. I said, there's not, but I can have people, you know, put money on it so I can get home. And then he asked her which one she wanted to um, him to leave. And then she um, said the one ending in um, a certain series of numbers. And then she said, obviously that was the one that he took because I think he thought there was money on there because that was the one that I pointed out. So he gave me another one and he threw that down too. And then he had also picked up my camera at this point and asked if there was, if this was my camera and I said, yeah, but he had thrown that down at the time. He didn't take it right then. And then um, she asked if, was asked if he eventually took that. She said, yeah, he did. I didn't realize it till about a day later. Um, and then she said that she was still um, at, she was asked if she was crying at that point. She said, no, I mean, I'm still shaking. I'm still nervous. His demeanor is very, really was actually very calm. Like he had done it before. I mean, I'm not making presumptions, but he was actually very calm. He basically knew what to look for, that kind of stuff. And then she was asked, are you as calm as you can be considering? She said, yeah, at this point I had asked him if I could sit up. So I was actually sitting on the floor with my hands tied behind my back. She was asked, what are you thinking at this point? Are you nervous that he was going to hurt you, kill you? She said, no, because I wasn't as nervous as before because he had actually put the gun away. When he, had, when he got done going through my purse, he got up and asked where the phone was that he had called me on. And she told him it was on the table. Um, he picked it up and started going through it and actually erased his number out of the call log. 
um, she was asked, um, obviously it's never permanently erased. And she said, right. Um, she was asked, what did you, I mean, did you think of that at the time that obviously, obviously the police could trace a call. I mean, were you thinking like, this is silly. She said, I actually was asking him if I could do it for him because I just wanted him to leave. But he was like, no, I'll take care of it. I got it. Um, she was asked, did you think that was an odd scenario for him to try to cover his tracks that way? She said, yeah, like, cause I'm, I mean, obviously he brought gloves. He knew how to erase his number from my phone. And then to make sure that I didn't get to my phone right away, he turned it over, opened the back of it and actually took the battery and threw it behind the entertainment center. So I couldn't get to it right away. And then um, she said he put the gun in his pants pocket and then um, next she said that he started looking around the room a little bit. The one thing that I thought was really weird that I didn't really say anything to him about is he walked over to towards uh, by where my suitcase was and he picked up a pair of uh, my underwear that were on the floor and put them in his pocket. Um, she was asked what she thought of that. She said, I thought it was weird, like I didn't ask him what he was doing, nothing because I didn't know, you know, because I didn't care to know, but it was just weird to me. Um, and then she said, I just wanted him out. I wasn't trying to keep him there for anything longer. And then eventually he asked me if there was a safe in the room. Um, she said, I said yes, but I haven't put anything in it. Of course, he checked anyway. And then he was kind of like walking around the room. And by this time, I was getting antsy, like I just wanted him to leave. So I asked him what he was doing, because he was like going around, like trying to move like the furniture and stuff. And she said, what are you doing? He's like, I'm trying to find something to tie you to, because I need more time to get away. And he's like, or should I just cut you loose? And I said, yeah, you can cut me loose. I'm not going to tell anybody. And he said, I don't believe you. He said, I think I need to tie you to something so I can get more time to get away. She said, I actually was like trying to suggest places for him to tie, try, tie to me so he could just tie me up and leave. I asked him to tie me to the enter entertainment center door because there was a door that opened. He said, oh, you can just bust that right off. I was like, I'm not that strong, you know. So basically he ended up tying me to the bathroom door. And then as soon as he tied me to the bathroom door, he said, hold on a second and went back into the room. Where he went, I couldn't see because the line of vision was blocked. There was like a little wall or something there, but I heard a zipper on my suitcase. I don't know what he was doing. I didn't hear him like rustling around in my suitcase, but I just heard the zipper. And then um, then he came back over and put, took something else out of his pocket. And he ended up taping my mouth, putting three pieces of tape over my mouth. But I was noticing as he was doing it that he was not wearing gloves. So I just let him put the tape on me. And also at some point during the robbery, he did cut both the phone lines in the room so I wouldn't have a direct outlet after he left. And he walked back into the room, just one took one more look around and then just walked out the door. And then she said that he tied her up with some plastic zip cords to the door. Um, and then she was asked when he walked out what he said to her. She said nothing. He did at one point tell me that he would wait about 15 minutes after he had left the hotel and call security um, and say that he had heard something come from the room and asked me the room number. Um, she gave him the room number and then um, mumbled it because she had tape on her mouth. And then he just walked out the door. Um, she was asked, did you really think he was going to do that? She said no. Um, she was asked how she got out. She said, within one minute of him leaving, I actually twisted right um, out of the ties. It hurt, but I twisted out of the ties and like took the tape off my mouth. I crumbled up the tape and threw it on the bed. And I waited for probably about a minute. And then she um, looked into the hallway to make sure he wasn't standing there. And then um, she said, I went to the room next door and knocked on the door and asked if I could use their phone to call security because I had just been robbed. Um, so then she was asked if uh, security came and if the police came, did, if she gave them the police, um, gave them the tape with the fingerprints. And she said it was, I mean, everything was in the room still. I had left the room and I hadn't been back in there. Um, 
and she said that the police did take the tape and everything. She said they took the tape, they took the zip ties that were on the door, they took pictures of everything obviously, and they took my cell phone. And then she was asked um, if they ever looked into her Craigslist account to identify who he was. And she said, no, they didn't, not that night, no, they didn't. No, they didn't look into my Craigslist account that night. Um, and then she was asked, when did you find out who he was in terms of the investigation? She said she did the day he was arrested. And then she was asked, how did you find out that Philip Markoff was the person that was the same person that ended up murdering someone? She said, I got a call on April 13th that my phone was going to be returned to me the next day at about 1030 in the morning. At nine o'clock, I got a call saying that they had to talk to me. It was very important that they talk to me and where I asked where I was staying. Um, I gave them the hotel and then the room number um, and said, they said, okay, we'll be there in five minutes. Um, once they showed up, they gave her a piece of paper with a picture on it. And I said, oh, this is a really good picture of him. Where did you get this? They said, is that the guy that robbed you? I said, yes. They said, how do you know? And I, she said, he's wearing the same exact clothes. I said, is this from the surveillance from the same night? And they said, no, that's actually from the Marriott. And I kind of looked at him funny and was like, there, and he was like, there was a girl murdered there last night. And we think this is the same guy. He used the same method. Um, she was tied up with plastic zip cords. And then she said, my heart just dropped. Um, she was asked, did you think that you could have died that night? She said, yes. And then she was asked, what was going through your head when you heard that? She said, that could have been me that had, I mean, he could have killed me that night. She was asked, what were you thinking? I mean, what was going through your head at that time? What was swirling? She said that it was, well, I was in this even deeper now than just me being robbed. It was now a murder investigation and that I was right in the middle of it. And she said she got really scared. Um, she said, what kinds of things were the police now? Were they helpful? She said, yes, Barry. They were just like, you know, we really do need you in order for us to catch this guy now. And then she said, I guess, she said, whatever you need. And then she was asked, so you saw security photos. What kind of things did you see on the security photos? She said, I saw him the way he was dressed when he robbed me. He was in a black leather coat, dark jeans with a tan shirt underneath, and about 6'2", blonde hair. And of course, you can't see his eyes in the surveillance, but I knew they were light-colored eyes. And they asked me if I knew how old he was, and I really thought he was upper 20s, but obviously he's 22. So um, she was asked, the night that he pulled out the gun, did you at all think that night that you could die? She said, I was just so wrapped up in trying to comply with everything that he said to not think about it. I was trying to not think about me being hurt or harmed. And then she said, to tell you the truth, it wasn't really a thought at that time. I thought he would, you know, I had a feeling he was just there for the money. He just wanted the money and to get out because as soon as he pulled the gun, he had put it away. I didn't see it the rest of the time. And she was asked, the night that he was attacking you, did you think when he pulled out that gun. I mean, obviously uh, been attacked with a gun before. Did you think that I'm facing death here? She said, I mean, truthfully, no. Like it was just like I got scared, obviously, cause he had a gun. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, oh, it's not loaded, you know, it's a toy, you know, stuff like that. Just something to scare me. Like he just wants my money and to get out. Like never once did he touch me other than to tie me up and then to tie me to the doorknob. He was very calm. He didn't tell me to shut up. He told me to be quiet, you know. I guess you could call him polite. Didn't call me names and swear at me nothing. And then um, she was asked, it only dawned on you later that she said, yeah, when the other girl got killed, yes. And then she said, it dawned on me later that he could have very well killed me. Um, and then asked, when you saw the surveillance photos, how sure were you that it was Philip Markoff? She said, I was 100% sure. And then she said, well, obviously the first photo they showed me, I actually thought it was from the West in the night that I got robbed. They didn't tell me beforehand that, you know, it was from different surveillance from another hotel. I thought maybe they had gotten another clearer picture. So, I mean, I was 100% sure it was the same guy. 
he was even dressed the same, wearing the same clothes. And then um, she said, or she was asked, when did you start finding out who he was, his background? Did the police start telling you about that or did you only start reading about it in the media? She said, I only started reading about it in the media after he was actually arrested. And she was asked, what did you think about that? She said, well, I just don't understand how somebody that is obviously smart has his whole life ahead of him, has a beautiful fiance, you know, getting married, going to have, you know, life to live, could do something like this. Um, she was asked, obviously, you know, you're reading about him, about this. He was in medical school. He seemed to have all these things going for him. Does it seem like the guy that came to your room that night? She said, yes and no. I mean, yes, because I know what he looks like. No, because I didn't know anything about him. Characteristic type, nothing. When he called me, I did ask him what he did for a living, and he actually told me he was a student. He didn't tell me what type of a student, but he said he was a student. Uh, she was asked, did he raise his voice to you? You said he was very, I mean, he wasn't nasty to you. She said, he did not raise his voice. I kept asking him, can I say something? Can I say something? He just kept telling me to be quiet. He didn't want to hear anything. He just wanted to, I think he just wanted to get what he wanted and get out. But he didn't curse at you. He wasn't violent. She said, no, not at all. Um, and then again, she said that he was calm. Um, and then that she felt like he knew what he was doing. And then um, she was asked, when you started reading about him, did you have any kind of reaction about who he was and what brought him to you or what would drive him to kill another woman? She said, I mean, I can't get inside his head, but I mean, it's just, it's just this belief that someone who had their whole life set out for him and whole life ahead of him that could even fathom to do something like this. As far as I mean, I don't know if he thinks that by targeting girls on Craigslist that somebody's not going to come forward, but I feel that if I wouldn't have come forward, he'd still be on the streets. And then she was asked if she came forward immediately, and she said yes. She was asked, I mean, you gave a police report. You had no problem identifying who he was, but he might have still been out there if someone wasn't killed, don't you think? I mean, do you have any speculation about that? She said, I had a good possibility that they were looking on the case before she had gotten murdered because they were working with me on the case before that happened. And then she was asked, so you think he would have been caught? She said, yes. And she was asked, do you think the police took your case seriously? She said, yes. And then um, she was asked, tell me a little bit about why you felt that the police um, took it. She said, the next day after the robbery, they had me down at the police station looking at photos already and going through phone numbers in my phone, calling my bank to see if my bank card had been used and also calling my phone company to see if I could get the phone records. Um, she was said, she was asked, you were clearly the victim in this case, but obviously you learned some important things from this. Do you have a warning out there for anything or anything you'd want to say? She said, just, I mean, trust your instincts. Obviously, my instinct was this guy was good, but not all money is good money. And she was asked, I mean, you had a lot of precautions in place. You had a system down. You knew that you had indicators. You had alert signs that you took that um, would send off signals whether someone could be trusted or not. Uh, Philip Markoff kind of met those initial signals. I mean, he didn't, it didn't work this time. Is there something that can be said for that or not really? She said, not really at this point. I mean, other girls that are on Craigslist, we all have our own screening process. Obviously, some people need to be screened a little bit more than others. And she was asked, anything else that you think is really important for you to say? Is there anything else you really want to get across? I mean, this is your time. She said, Basically, I just want to say that, I mean, I'm glad that he's behind bars and I'm glad that I, I came forward with my story because I feel that if I didn't, he would still be out there possibly hurting other people and it might have escalated into more than just what it did and just I'm going to be there to help through the whole thing. And then um, the interviewer asked and they just want me to ask one last question. In your words, how would you describe what you do for a living? and what you were anticipating happening mean that night in your words. And then she um, said she didn't feel comfortable answering that question. 
Um, she was asked, what are your plans with Craigslist ad and what's happening with your Craigslist ad right now? She said, nothing. I'm not going to be advertising on Craigslist anymore. Don't want to want to go through this again. Um, she was asked what um, she wanted to do now for a living. And she said, um, probably going back to school. Um, and then she didn't have an idea yet of what um, she would like to do. And um, she was asked, do you have aspirations to do something in the future? She said, I don't know. I'm kind of taking it one day at a time right now. Um, and then again, um, Trisha, she was uh, robbed by Philip of $800 and credit cards. And it was said that a lot of the case uh, would rest on the testimony of her as the first victim. And then he had her in captivity in 15 minute, for 15 minutes at least. Um, the second victim was um, Julissa Brisman. Um, and then four days after uh, robbing and terrorizing Miss Leffler, uh, Julissa became the second private masseuse brought to the same um, hotel in Boston where Trisha had um, met Philip. And then it was said that this time things didn't go as planned. Um, it was described that Julissa was a force to be reckoned with. And then she had fought her attacker until he bludgeoned her with uh, the pistol and shot her three times. Hotel staff found her uh, lying near the doorway of the room and then they had called 911. Uh, she unfortunately had passed away soon after she was brought to a Boston hospital. Um, and then going into more detail, it said shortly into their meeting, um, Philip attacked her and it had appeared to be a robbery gone wrong. Uh, he had tried to restrain her and then again bludgeoned her with his pistol. She was almost a foot shorter than Philip, um, but struggled um, and fought back. He again shot her three times at close range and then fled the scene. And then when um, she went to the Boston Medical Center, it was the same um, place where Philip had studied to become a doctor. And about um, Julissa, she was from the Upper West Side and then in New York, and she was a beautiful aspiring actress whose um, she had a tough life, which um, led her to drink and then to offering um, massages on Craigslist, it was said. She um, would have turned 26 and lived on West 107th Street, just outside of Central Park in New York. And then she also had a younger sister who she doted on. She was described as being five foot, um, five inches tall and had shimmering blonde hair. It was said that she found some fame by making the, a public service ad for the Near Ear Foundation on the dangers of distraction when talking on a cell phone while walking down the street. Um, she had battled alcohol abuse and then enrolled in a, a two-year city college program to become a drug and alcohol counselor. And then um, a friend said that Julia said did a photo shoot for a tanning salon ad and that she had also worked on music videos. And a cousin of Grisman says, the aspiring actress um, told her mother, Carmen Guzman, that she was going to Boston to meet a medical student she had met on the internet. And then Julissa's cousin um, said, my aunt was like, you better be careful because people who are on the internet are sometimes bad people. The cousin told a reporter um, and then it was said that two days after attacking Trisha on April 12th of 2009, Philip was gambling at Foxwoods. And then two days after that, he returned to Boston, or to Boston to meet Brisman in a 20th floor room at the posh Marriott Copley place arranged by emails, cops said. And then the next day, a friend of Julissa looked at um, her email account and saw messages from a man that Julissa was scheduled to see the night before a massage, the night before for a massage. And then the friend immediately forwarded the email to detectives. Um, and then on April 16th of 2009, um, it was another night of gambling at Foxwoods with Markoff winning $5,300. That same night, he was suspected of an attempted robbery in the Warwick, Rhode Island Holiday Inn Express. 
of a woman who had posted a Craigslist ad as a stripper. Um, in that attack, she was held at gunpoint before her husband entered the hotel room and then he, Philip, fled. Um, Boston cops pinpointed the physical location of the computer used to send the email to Julissa from the luxury towers in Quincy, Massachusetts, where Philip and Megan lived. Cops staked out his building and then saw Philip and Megan leave. They were headed to Foxwood Casinos, um, excuse me, they were headed to Foxwoods Casino, and then cops pulled them over on Interstate 95 and arrested him. And then um, a little bit more about Julissa. Friends um, said that they didn't know she had a secret life. It was said that what we knew, what we know is that Miss Brisman was advertising masseuse services on Craigslist and um, said Boston police spokeswoman Elaine Driscoll. Yeah, he was Andy and she was Morgan. Both were fake names. They never actually spoke to each other. All their communication was by email or text message. And then Philip used a disposable track phone that would be hard to trace. And then uh, Julissa's friend and em employer pretended that she was um, Morgan when setting up their meeting via um, cyberspace. He found her listing as a masseuse in the Craigslist erotic services section on April 13th. And she said she was visiting Boston for three days. She had a room on the 20th floor of the Boston Marriott Copley Place, um, an upscale Back Bay Hotel. And then using the email address amdpm at live.com, he initially answered to the anonymous address provided by Craigslist. And her replies came back from massages by Morgan Boston at yahoo.com. And then at 4.37 p.m. he wrote, I myself am visiting Boston and was looking for a 10 p.m. or later appointment tonight or tomorrow. Unfortunately, I will not be free any earlier. Um, later he emailed again, Morgan, I can still make it tonight, but I am thinking tomorrow at 10 would be better for me, but otherwise I'll be there tonight as planned. Thanks, Andy. And then um, she said, my Wednesday appointment moved later, the masseuse whose real name was Julissa Brisman and who worked part-time in a New York tanning salon answered, I could do it tomorrow night or we could do it 10.30 or 11 tonight if you wanted to see me later tonight. Let me know what you prefer, Morgan. At 7.03 p.m. he said, hey Morgan, 10 p.m. tomorrow is best for me. Thank you, Andy. The next night he used the track phone to say that he had arrived early at um, 9.41 p.m. And then um, Mary Beth Simmons, who um, it's, was not her real name, who owns the tanning salon where Brisman um, worked and who acted as her screener and intermediary, took the call and texted um, Jalissa that she had told him to come up on the hour. And then a few minutes after um, 10, it said all pretense and politeness were dropped and Julissa was dead. Um, it was described that um, in the this new kind of murder, the internet was front and center at every turn. It enabled the crime and it was the principal tool used to establish the identity of the um, prime suspect. When uh, Simmons, who or Simons, who lives on the West Coast, did not receive her usual text from Julissa, signaling that the transaction had been completed. Uh, she texted her at 11 p.m. Um, at midnight and then again at 5.30 a.m., asking her to know that, let her know that everything was okay. Um, at 7.10 a.m., still having heard nothing, she called security at the Marriott Copley place and was immediately transferred to the Boston police who had been coming through the crime scene to gather forensic evidence such as hair and blood. Um, she told um, officers that she had helped set up the massage appointment through Craigslist and that she could provide them with the email name and address of Andy. And then in addition, um, she gave police the password to the Yahoo message account. Um, then she called Mark Rosh, the former head of the computer crime unit of the U.S. Department of Justice and a self-described digital detective who she knew was an expert in computer forensics. 
he promptly went to work aiding the police. Um, and then it was said that the murder um, was committed in a very personal, violent way, said Suffolk County District Attorney Daniel Conley. Brisman, who was 5'5 and weighed 105 pounds, presumably tried to resist. And then as a result, um, the killer bashed her skull in with the butt of a 9 millimeter semi-automatic pistol and shot her three times at close range in the heart, chest, and abdomen. And then a woman in a nearby room, after hearing shrieks, went into went out into the hallway and said saw a clothed body sprawled across the doorway of Brisman's room and a police, piece of plastic tie was hanging from one wrist. Boston law enforcement started backtracking to find out Andy's identity, uh, first establishing that the email account at live.com came from Microsoft in Redmond, Washington. Um, next, they had to find out who was accessing that account and from where. Um, they used legal processes such as court orders and search warrants to get Microsoft to disclose the unique, unique computer ID number um, or IP address that was used to send the email answering the Craigslist ad. Rosh explained, um, Craigslist was able to see what time and date the user of the live.com address responded to each of its postings when he clicked Morgan's or the other two women's ads, for instance. It was said that people, um, or he said, people who use Craigslist leave more of a trail than people who just use the phone, said Rosh. Um, Conley said further, People feel online communication is pretty discreet, which is um, false. And then um, hotel security services routinely um, monitored Craigslist to see how much of the erotic trade they were attracting. And then the police searched the hotel surveillance tapes to see who appeared on camera just after the killing. Uh, Simon's phone call and her text to Brisman right before the killer got to Brisman's room made the timing precise, and the um, surveillance tapes showed that um, Trisha's description of her attacker was um, looking down and working his phone while walking briskly, but nonchalantly, or excuse me, it said the surveillance tape showed that um, just after the killing occurred, a tall blonde white male matching Trisha's description of her attacker was looking down and working his phone while walking briskly but nonchalantly away from the Marriott Copley elevators. And surveillance tapes at the Westin Copley revealed a remarkably similar looking person texting upon leaving that hotel in this time frame of the Leffler holdup. And he doesn't seem to rattle very easily, said Conley. And um, police also uh, found out that uh, with the AD, the amdpm at live.com email account, um, what information the subscriber provided when it was created and the IP address of the computer used to create it. What they learned was that the email account was a throwaway account uh, created a day or two before just for the purpose of making uh, the connections. Um, but they, police uh, had to still figure out who was sending the emails. And then the address uh, came back to an internet service provider in the Boston area. The provider was able to give the police the name and address of the customer to whom they had assigned the particular IP address. Um, and then when the police went to investigate the physical location at eight point, eight High Point Circle in Quincy, Massachusetts, a suburb of Boston, it turned out to be a large apartment building. Um, the IP address was associated was definitely associated with a particular person, but it was a wireless router, so anybody in the building could have been using the address, said Rosh. Um, that's the nature of wireless. So while the police had a name and address that got them close, it did not give them the suspect. Um, anybody within a few hundred feet of the router would have been able to access that router and be assigned the internet or the IP address the police were looking for. Um, nevertheless, Ross said the first thing police did once they had a name was exactly um, what a lot of people do. They went to Facebook and Google to find out who their suspect was and what he looked like. Um, and then it was said they 
fell back on tried and true detective work and began an old fashioned stakeout. And they were shocked to learn who it was they were looking for. And uh, Julissa's mother in her first public statement um, about her murder said that their family was devastated. She said, we are a close family and Julissa called us every day. We won't be getting those calls anymore. Um, she was studying to be a counselor and helped many people in our community. And she said, he, uh, Philip, was a monster who can never escape God's justice. Uh, Miss Guzman said that Philip Markoff destroyed my family and that my fam destroyed my life and that of my family. She said, I cursed the day, the hour, and the minute that Philip Markoff picked my daughter as his next victim. Um, and then that she said that in a statement before uh, her daughter had been honored with 35 others at an annual ceremony at Boston's Garden of Peace, which was a memorial for nearly 700 homicide victims. Um, Julissa's mom said that she did not know that Julissa was advertising on Craigslist. Her mom said, she told me she worked for the tanning salon and was going out of town to help train a girl in a new business. And um, Brisman, unfortunately, she was killed 10 days before her 26th birthday and then two weeks before completing a year's course in addiction counseling at, again, the City of College of New York. And then um, it was said that that was spurred by her bouts with alcoholism, which um, she had been hospitalized for that at least twice. And then a, after nearly a year of sobriety, she was at regularly, excuse me, she was regularly attending AA meetings and wanted to help others, particularly women, um, overcome the disease. It was said she was very attractive, young, bright with a lot of potential. She had to drive her about her, her counselor said. Um, her counselor said, I work in a field where 75% don't make it. This girl came with a purpose. And then on Julissa's MySpace page, she described herself as a true born and raised Manhattan hottie, finally getting a hold of this wonderful thing we call life. And then in May of 2008, her entry was indexed by myspaceprofiles.org. Um, and then she chronicled her primary interest as acting and said, I live it, I breathe it, it's my passion. Fashion shows and shopping after, Broadway shows, concerts, I love sexy times, hanging out and spoiling my gorgeous dog, Coco Chanel. He's the man of my life. And then um, Julissa, um, took advantage of the neighborhood enrichment programs. And then her mom got her into uh, dancing, ice skating and riding lessons. And Julissa had a number of jobs, um, which included selling shoes, waitressing and clerking at Macy's. In uh, 2003, while working at Macy's department store, she had acquired a criminal record by pleading guilty to a charge of grand larceny which um, that charge was later reduced. And her mother said a girl stole clothes from Macy's and told them that Julissa knew about it. And then the girl disappeared. Um, Julissa said the girl was lying and then Julissa paid it all back. When um, Julissa's friend Daisy Lynn, um, or said with her friend Daisy Lynn, Julissa went to bartending school and became a bartender. But at a number of places, she didn't last long. Um, the owners would like her, come on to her, and she'd leave. And then uh, Daisy added that Julissa was used to um, Craigslist because that's how she got her bartending jobs. Lynn said, Brisman felt driven to help her little sister and buy things for her. And then she finally decided to quit drinking because it made her mother suffer. Um, and then with her tips being gone and college courses that she had to pay for, uh, Julissa tried to make money other ways um, and her makeup artist Emily Claire said she had the body and then Emily did uh, Julissa's makeup for her headshots that she needed for auditions. She never landed any decent roles however instead uh, Julissa told Claire she would fly to places such as Chicago to do parties and she made it sound like it was wealthy guys in groups almost like a strip club but without the lap dances. Girls would walk around in bikinis or topless and serve drinks um, and chat. She'd do it once a month and get paid $1,000.
However, she insisted to Claire, I would never touch those guys, that's so gross. She also became a sensual masseuse. And Julissa's counselor said, he tried to talk her out of it, but she told him, I need to take care of my sister, he added. I know she wasn't in it for prostitution. Um, Julissa's mom recalled a young woman at Julissa's funeral pushing a six-month-old baby in a stroller. She told me Julissa helped her with her drinking problem. She said Julissa saved her life and her baby's life. After her murder, um, after Julissa's murder, Philip then decided to uh, go to Rhode Island where he believed seclu seclusion would give him an advantage. And then he never suspected that um, things would occur differently with his next victim. His third victim, um, her name is Cynthia Melton. And again, I wasn't able to find pictures of her when I was doing a search online. And two days after Julissa's murder in Warwick, Rhode Island, about 40 miles from Boston, uh, Cynthia Melton, a stripper who advertised lap dances on Craigslist and occasionally danced at the Cadillac Lounge in Providence, uh, made an appointment to see a man she met through erotic services section at the Warwick Holiday Inn Express. Um, he scheduled their 11 p.m. meeting on a track phone. And then once inside her room, uh, she said the client was wearing a baseball cap. Um, he pulled out a gun, made her, made her lie face down on the floor and bound her with the same type of plastic ties used on Brisman and Leffler. He tried to silence her with a ball gag, a device recently, or excuse me, a device routinely used in sadomasochistic sex, which again, he was interested in, um, which is stuffed in the mouth and secured with ties at the back of the head. But she kept shaking her head no until he finally gave up. And she told authorities that he had been extremely nervous and was trembling as he rummaged through the room looking for her cash and credit cards. Um, he said, don't worry, I'm not going to kill you. Just give me the money. And then at that point, her husband happened to knock on the door. Um, according to them, um, when the assailant pointed the gun at uh, her husband, Keith Melton, he, um, Keith, instinctively started walking backward down the hall until he tripped and fell. And then the assailant fled down a nearby stairwell uh, his entrance to the hotel had been caught on surveillance tape while he was texting. Um, one of his texts that night was traced to the area of a nearby Walmart, where at 10 o'clock he had bought the baseball cap he wore during the attempted robbery, um, and Walmart's cameras established the purchase. And then, although uh, Philip told Cynthia, don't worry, I'm not going to kill you, while he bound and um, tried to gag her, it was said that um, Cynthia's husband may have actually saved his wife's life by knocking on her hotel room door, catching Philip off guard. Um, and then now going into how uh, Philip was caught, some more details. Um, the victims identified him as a tall, blonde, somewhat young and clean cut man. And then it took police a few days to catch Philip Markov um, on closed caption TV footage or CCTV. And the virtual footage, the Craigslist killer left behind is what eventually brought him to justice. Again, he had left messages recorded by email providers and IP addresses, uh, which was visible to Craigslist each time someone made a post. And then using that information, police were able to determine that the messages responding to the Craigslist ads had come from the apartment building in Boston. Um, and then it was said that seemingly unaware of IP addresses, detectives uh, were able to trace messages through the emails he sent his victims. Um, however, meeting the woman at a hotel made identifying the killer through fingerprints and DNA uh, slow down the investigation because a lot of people are in and out of the rooms and housekeepers um, don't always have time to wipe down every single surface. And then um, 
it was said, which is why it's important to have a trained biohazard team in the event of a hotel crime. And then it took, again, police a couple days, but then police finally identified him. Um, they uh, did a stakeout of his apartment complex, which they were led to by the IP address. And then um, they, when they were there, they noted his Phillips resemblance to the man that police caught on camera. And then uh, when Philip again and his and Megan left their apartment to go to a nearby casino, the cops pulled them over and then he was arrested for the murder and the robberies. And as he was being transported to jails, the officers swarmed his apartment to collect further evidence. Um, the weapons used and the evidence collected included a variety of weapons. And then he used uh, a specific type of duct tape, it was said, to tie up his victims and then uh, plastic cords and kill Julissa with a gun. Uh, in total, he used zip ties, duct tape, and a nine millimeter semi-automatic handgun. And at the apartment, the police also uncovered a large amount of cash and several personal items of his victims, which included several pairs of women's underwear uh, hidden in his apartment, stuffed in socks. They weren't Megan's underwear. And then they also found a hard drive that contained the conversations that he had with his victims. And then um, with the underwear, those with him keeping them, he used those um, as trophies to remember the thrill of the crimes and there's a question was he aroused by having the underwear that no one else knew about because he hid them in socks so not even Megan knew about them um did he become aroused if he um touched them or maybe even smelled them uh, to re relive the thrill of being in control um there's a thought did the underwear give him a dose of uh, dopamine which is considered the happy hormone did it bring him feelings of pleasure and reward to remind him of the crimes. And then the charges um, that were brought against him, he was charged with the armed robbery and then murder of Julissa Brisman in the Boston Hotel on April 14th of 2009, and then two of the other armed robberies. It was said that he didn't look in the direction of the suffering families during the entire time his alleged crimes um, were being read. He maintained his innocence of all charges and pleaded not guilty at his arraignment on April 21st. And then um, none of his family was present at his arraignment, which the press noted. And then again, he previously, or he reportedly had no previous criminal record. And um, each of his assault charges could have led to a 20 year maximum, se maximum sentence for a potential 40 year prison term if convicted of the felonies. Um, and then he was appointed a court appointed criminal defense lawyer, John Salzberg. Um, and then he would receive the court appointed attorney because uh, his parents weren't helping him financially. And then he owed the $130,000 in student loans and he had no employment. Um, and then it was said that authorities largely discounted the widely reported notion that gambling debts might have gotten him um, into the uh, crimes. And then Philip's parents, Susan and Richard, visited their son in jail. And his uh, Philip's attorney said on their behalf that they loved their son very much and supported him. And then later, Philip's brother also visited him. And the last time Philip was seen in public was at his arraignment for the grand jury's indictment on June 22nd of 2009 in Suffolk County Superior Court in downtown Boston, Massachusetts. And it was said that the police, the people in the spectator section of the magistrate's courtroom included Philip's biological parents, his brother, his brother's wife and an unidentified young man. Um, they stared straightly ahead and barely spoke. At the arraignment, his mom, um, it was said, had to watch her son, who at one point had such a promising future, 
um, being led into the courtroom in shackles. And um, ABC News revealed that uh, Philip had scratches on him at the time of his arrest and his fingerprints were found on plastic restraints at the scene of two of the three suspected uh, Craigslist victims. And then his prints were also found on the wall of the Warwick, Rhode Island hotel room where um, his third victim was robbed. And sources said investigators were also able to track Philip's cell phone calls to the crime scenes. The um, him being the suspect in the Rhode Island robbery was caught on um, surveillance cameras, again, looking at his cell phone as he left the hotel. And um, police said they tracked down Philip using surveillance videos at the three hotels. In um, photos taken from hotel cameras, the man police um, had been seeking in connection with the crimes appeared to be fixated on a Blackberry. And then investigators said that the Blackberry is what led them to Philip. Um, police sor a police source close to the investigation said cops found Philip by tracing Craigslist emails. They followed high tech leads and old fashioned shoe leather, Suffolk County District Attorney Dan Conley said. They've connected IP addresses and physical locations. They found um, the gun found inside Philip's apartment was a forensic match to the casings on bullets used to shoot and kill Ms. Brisman. In addition, um, investigators said the plastic uh, restraining ties used at the attack or in the attack at a Holiday Inn Express in uh, Warwick, Rhode Island on a woman who had advertised erotic services exactly matched plastic ties found in Markov's apartment. And then in a twist, however, Warwick Police Chief Colonel um, Steve McCartney told ABC News that the woman who was robbed in the Holiday Inn Express was reluctant to cooperate with the investigation. Um, and then some, again, speculated that the motives for his attacks was to finance his gambling habit. But Vernon Gerberth, um, a former NYPD homicide investigator, um, excuse me, his name's either Vernon Gebirth or Gebirth, a former um, NYPD homicide investigator and expert on sexual murders, said um, doesn't buy the gambling theory. He's a sexual pe predator no matter what they say. And um, it, again, he was arrested while driving with, with Megan on Interstate 95 in Walpole, Massachusetts, south of Boston. Uh, police saw him exit in his exit his apartment building with her carrying an overnight case. Um, ordinarily, they would have watched him a bit longer, but then they were concerned about how far he might be going. Once he um, goes out of state, we lose control, they said. Um, Megan thought they were being pulled over for speeding. Um, and then although she shared the apartment with um, Philip for, the, for seven months um, at the time of the crime, she had been away during the period when the crimes were committed and then police soon concluded that she was clueless about um, his alleged crime spree and um, when they were on their way to foxwoods casino in connecticut about a half an hour from where the rhode island assault on cynthia melton had taken place philip had about sixteen hundred dollars in cash on him and that would have been his 19th visit to Foxwoods in four and a half months. Um, his first visit had been noted on December 8th of 2008 when he signed up for the Wham Pum Points Awarded as perks for frequent gamblers. His presence had also been documented in the early evening of April 16th, the night Melton was attacked. Uh, police were able to trace his Foxwood visits um, by the computer records kept of his quote unquote burning wampum. Um, he didn't give up any information, which was um, said about when Philip was arrested. And then while he remained mum at police headquarters in Boston, the investigators searched his um, apartment in Quincy, which yielded um, a trove of evidence. 
so the gun that uh, the police believed was used to kill Jalissa, um, a Springfield Armory XD9 semi-automatic was hidden in a hollowed out copy of Grey's Anatomy, Grey's Anatomy which is the classic um, medical reference textbook. They found a supply of the plastic ties used in all three crimes and quantities of bullets they matched those removed from Julissa's body. Uh, four pairs of women's underwear were stuffed two each into a pair of socks hidden in the box springs of the couple's bed. And then there were extra track phones and a laptop computer whose hard drive later yielded pieces of Andy's response to Brisman, so the name he used, um, to Brisman's Craigslist posting. Uh, they also found 45 $100 bills. And when Philip was arrested, he was carrying a New York State driver's license with a photo of someone by the name of Andrew Miller, who police said had nothing to do with any of the crimes. And police allege that Markoff's fingerprints are on the purchasing documents for the gun he bought with um, Miller's license in Mason, New Hampshire. Uh, his prints were also found on the duct tape used to bind Trisha's mouth, as well as on the wall in the hotel room where the assault on Cynthia took place. Shortly before Philip's arrest, Boston University Medical School gave police his identification photo which uh, Trisha picked out in a sequential photo identifying procedure. And then um, as news of the evidence trickled out, a profile emerged of um, the man police believe attacked and robbed women he met through Craigslist to pay off his gambling debts. Police said Megan, who stuck by him and did not say much publicly, was accustomed to a lavish lifestyle that may have been financed, at least in part, by the money he got from robbing other women. Um, so again, they um, were planning an expensive wedding also. Um, at the time, um, Megan's father said his daughter was coping with the help of friends and that she knew nothing of the alleged crimes. Uh, she's still confident in Phil, Jim McAllister said. Other than that, we're saying a lot of prayers. And ABC News learned that um, Megan and Philip had reservations to stay at the Foxwoods Casino. Um, again, the same place where he reportedly won $5,300 just two days after Julissa was murdered. And his indictment, um, the grand jury, or a grand jury indicted Philip for first degree murder, armed robbery, and other charges. The mother of, um, the woman police say was slain by accused Craigslist killer uh, Philip Markoff said today that said that her family is devastated. So again, Miss Guzman, um, they were devastated by Julissa's death, but she was pleased that the alleged killer won't be able to do this horrible thing to any other woman. Um, Miss Guzman said over the past few days, people told them the many ways in which Julissa helped them. And she said, these words mean so much to us. We will hold Julissa in our hearts every day, she added. And then um, police had asked anyone who may have been contacted by Philip via Craigslist to come forward. And then law enforcement sources told ABC News at the time that detectives investigating the case were fielding calls from other potential victims. And at the time, Connecticut Attorney General Richmond Blumenthal called for the erotic services portion of Craigslist to be shut down, something other state officials across the country had also started looking into. Uh, we have a responsibility to protect children and women and anyone who may be victims of these kinds of criminal activity that may involve human trafficking, child exploitation, um, other brutal and violent crime, Blumenthal said. And in an interview with the Boston Globe, Craigslist CEO Jim Buckmaster denied the site offered sex-related services, despite the erotic services portion. Police said that's where Philip found all of his alleged victims. And um, Megan's um, response regarding um, the alleged crimes that Philip had committed 
it was said that it was easy for prosecutors to keep Philip in prison with all the evidence they found. And Megan had trouble believing that Philip could do such a thing and continue to stand by him. Uh, she initially affirmed her belief in his innocence and uh, insisted that he could not hurt a fly. She made a public statement which her lawyer Robert Honecker Jr. read outside her parents' home in Little Silver, New Jersey. She said she would continue to support um, Mr. Markoff, emphasizing that he was innocent until proven guilty. She said, I can only hope that the criminal justice system will not be overwhelmed and persuaded by what is being put forth in the media, um, said Megan. Um, My fiance's fate should not rest in the court of public opinion, but rather in a court of law. And then uh, it was said that suddenly Megan's careful plans were shattered. From the moment she and Markov were stopped by the police, her life went from wedding invitations and menus to paparazzi in jail. Shortly after the arrest, her father appeared in front of their house in Little Silver with tears in his eyes to face reporters. No, his daughter was not all right. Things were very tense. They thought their baby daughter was marrying the man of his dreams, or marrying the man of her dreams, and they'd go off and be happy for the rest of their lives, said um, Robert Honecker, the lawyer for Megan, that the family hired. And uh, Megan's first response was total disbelief. She emailed People magazine saying, Philip is a beautiful man inside and out and did not commit the cri- this crime. Unfortunately, somebody else did and needs to be penalized. Philip was set up. And ABC News received a similar email saying, a police officer in Boston or many is trying to make big bucks by selling this false story to the TV station. What else is new? Philip is an intelligent man who is just trying to live his life. So if you could just leave, so if you could leave us alone, we would greatly appreciate it. We expect to marry in August and share a wonderful, meaningful life together. However, on um, April 29th of 2009, uh, McAllister, dressed in black, went with her mother to visit Philip in jail for 25 minutes. She um, went to call off their wedding. And then the next day, her attorney um, discussed on the morning TV shows describing the meeting as emotional and saying the wedding that's been planned is obviously off. And then he added, there's been no break off of the engagement. Yes, she believes he's innocent. And then during the time in February when Philip bought the gun, um, Megan, who had had surgery on her back, was going home for medical treatment and spending a lot of time there planning their wedding. And then even though uh, the two of them had dated for four years, their families barely knew each other. And then their bride, her bridesmaids had never um, met Philip. And according to people close to Megan, um, she considered Markov brilliant and did not worry about his frequent visits to Foxwoods Casino or even about whether he should be gambling heavily during exam periods. And then the day they were arrested, for example, he was facing a final exam in hematology um, that Friday. So they were arrested on a Monday and then facing a final exam in hematology that Friday. Um, But since uh, it was said Boston University Medical School was a pass-fail program, she figured he would always be okay. And then um, just before she returned to Boston that week, uh, her mother had warned her to be careful because a guy there was hurting women. And then according to someone who knows her, uh, Megan had been racking her brain to think of anything she could have noticed that would have changed the course of events. On um, June 11th, Megan had to appear before the grand jury that would indict Philip later that month. And then she took the opportunity to visit him again in jail. And her attorney later told um, the morning news shows that she let him know that she did not expect to return to Boston and that it would probably be quite a long period of time, if ever, before she would see him again, which then led the prison system to place Philip on um, suicide watch. And then um, when the headlines said that Megan had dumped Philip, 
her attorney had issued a correction denying that she will not or may not ever see him again. She said she was the only person who had ever loved him. And Megan believed that each of them was the other's first love. She was in awe of Philip's intelligence and saw him as a protector, her attorney said. Um, He said, Megan's upset she's been labeled a country club blonde. Nothing could be further from the truth. She's very hardworking and her parents are hardworking. They don't belong to a country club. And then um, she said about Philip, he's very outgoing and I've always been very quiet. We didn't hang out in the same crowds. I was very, very reserved in high school and college and he was the outgoing one. And then um, the next portion that I'm going to talk about again, um, I just wanted to give a trigger warning just because it does talk about self-harm and um, suicide. And then please reach out to anyone um, if you do need help. Um, So going um, a little bit further describing about what happened to Philip, um, upon his arrival at the jail, other inmates, um, started taunting him and calling him, yo, Craigslist. It was said that he was nervous, um, one of the jail sources said, and he didn't want to be in the general population. And within 48 hours in jail, uh, Philip was put on suicide watch and moved to the infirmary as a result of some marks on his neck made by his shoelaces. He was seen by a psychiatrist who declined um, to have him sent to a state medical hospital. Um, The next day, his older brother, uh, Jonathan, and his wife visited Philip and the um, Boston Herald reportedly, uh, reported an um, allegedly overheard conversation between the two brothers. Uh, Philip said, forget about me. Um, Philip supposedly said, move to California. There's more coming out. The evidence um, against Philip was coming to light as he was put on a suicide watch and then he was moved from the general population of Boston's Nashua Street Jail to a segregated unit where officers could keep a constant eye on him. And then the shoelace marks were viewed as a suicide attempt, a source said, and he was moved to the shoe unit or a segregated unit where he was issued a paper gown and was to sleep on a cot without sheets or blankets, uh, blankets, just a bare mattress. Um, Philip's attorney, John Salzberg, visited Philip, but then declined to discuss whether Philip tried to commit suicide. He said, I am deeply concerned for Philip's well-being, and I have complete faith that the sheriff's office will take care of him. He added that the transition for any individual from civilian life to prison life is extremely hard and uh, Philip's experience is no exception. He, um, Philip had attempted suicide several times at the Nashua Street Jail and then he reportedly had attempted to kill himself two prior times at the facility after his arrest in April of 2009, which included um, hanging himself with his shoelaces and being scarred with a few rope burns on his neck and then um, slashing his wrists with a sharpened spoon. One attempt was made three days after his arrest and then an additional attempt um, after his fiancee Megan broke up with him and then another attempt on the day his wedding was to have taken place. At various times, he was on suicide watch or in the jail psychiatric um, unit. And then on April 21st of 2009, um, as Philip was transported from uh, Boston police headquarters to the Nashua Street Jail, he stuffed wads of toilet paper down his pants telling detectives, "Um, I might need this later, ABC News reported. And then hours later, Markov made his first suicide attempt. Um, He pulled the leather straps out of his boat shoes, tied them together and tried to hang himself from the bars on his cell. He was transferred to a secure medical unit and then put under 24 hour suicide watch. And then on April 30th, 2009, a day after he and Megan, um, after his fiance Megan broke up with him in jail, is when he attempted to rake a serrated spoon over his wrist. And 
on um, August 15th of 2010, one year and one day after his wedding was to have taken place, he was found dead in his cell by suicide in um, the Nashua Street Jail where he was awaiting trial. Uh, it was said that being a medical student, he knew anatomy and he created a makeshift shiv or knife out of a pen and either a piece of metal he took from an electric outlet in the prison or a razor used for shaving. Um, Philip got into bed and shoved the toilet paper down his throat so he could not be easily revived and then tightened a plastic bag over his head with gauze and then pulled his blankets up over his head. Um, he slashed, then slashed through the arteries in his legs, ankles, and his neck. He wrapped his legs in plastic bags to collect the blood. And then an ABC or ABC News reported he severed his femoral artery and then wrapped his legs in a clear plastic bag. And then he pulled another bag over his head. After several cell checks, a deputy sheriff noted that uh, Philip's body hadn't moved and made a health and welfare check on him, said a source at the jail. And then it was also stated that many hours later after missing breakfast and being in bed half the day with his head covered, a guard finally checked on him. And when Philip didn't answer, the guard went into his the cell, pulled down the blanket and witnessed um, the horror underneath. They pulled the cover back and it was a bloodbath, said another law enforcement source at the jail. Um, and then her name, Megan, was in a prominent place in the cell. He clearly knew what he was doing, said a law enforcement source at the jail. There were multiple cuts and he suffocated himself with a plastic bag and swallowed a lot of toilet paper. Officials initially thought the blood spattered instrument on Markov was a razor. Um, later, an official told ABC News that Philip managed to fashion a razor out of a jail issued pen while another official said he made it from a silver receptacle plate that covered an old electrical outlet um, and then no suicide note was found at the scene um, he was not on a suicide watch at the time of this and that was based on the psychiatrics recommendation said sheriff andrea cabral there was nothing about his behavior that indicated to us what he was going to do. And um, department policy did call for Philip um, to be checked on every 30 minutes. So an internal investigation was underway at the time to determine if that policy was followed or not, and if not, why. And then um, it was said, despite his conscientious effort to reduce um, being discovered, Philip did leave a message on the wall and he had written um, Megan's name and their pet names for each other in blood on the cell wall and then had uh, pictures of the two of them scattered about. And Boston City Councilor Steve Murphy ordered an investigation into the circumstances around the suicide uh, or surrounding the suicide. Um, he, uh, chairman of the Public Safety Committee, suggested that Philip may have been met with foul play, but um, that theory was dismissed by Boston Police Commissioner Ed Davis and Suffolk County District Attorney um, Dan Conley. They said um, Markoff was alone in his cell and all evidence collected thus far indicates that he took his own life, um, said the two of them, said the two of them in a joint statement. And uh, officials at the um, 654 bed maximum security jail did not say how long um, Philip may have been dead before he was um, discovered. And again, um, it was said there was no uh, suicide note left, but then he wrote um, Megan's name on the wall in blood and then also their word pocket, which was a pet name. Um, but the meaning wasn't really, um, didn't really come about about what that meant for the word pocket and then again it was noted that he had spread out uh, pictures of uh, Megan on the table in his cell and then um, he committed suicide the day that marked um, his would-be first wedding anniversary and um, his uh, 
suicide left his surviving victims and their families um, unable to confront um, him. And then um, it was said that they will never see justice done. Some may feel that they were denied closure. And then um, it was also said that the strong evidence discovered in his apartment and his resulting suicide allowed people to affirm his guilt. And as far as the public is concerned, he has been proven um, guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, even without a trial. Um, had he stayed alive, he would have likely gone away for the rest of his life. And then the family of um, Julissa reacted to Philip's suicide um, and then which denied them a long awaited opportunity to confront him. And then it was said to hear the details of their loved one's final moments said um, Juna Perkins, an attorney for Miss Brisman's mother, Carmen Guzman. Um, Juna said first he took their daughter from them, then he denied that opportunity for them. Many people who deal with homicide never get over it, but the criminal trial allows them to confront the suspect, hear the evidence, and reach some sort of resolution in the case. And then Perkins said um, Markov was determined to commit suicide. He was somebody who had an anatomical knowledge, and he was a smart guy. I'm sure he could find plenty of time to think. Uh, prosecutors formally dropped murder, the murder charges um, against Philip, who committed suicide um, while awaiting the trial for um, the murder of Miss Brisman. And Suffolk District Attorney Dan Connolly, whose office filed a document saying the prosecution had been um, terminated because of Philip's death, said Julius's relatives are frustrated they won't be able to face the accused. Um, he said they were robbed of the opportunity to have him held accountable in a court of law. In some respects, these trials, when they do occur, are cathartic for people. And then at the time, um, Conley said he planned to publicly release evidence against Philip within a few weeks, which he hoped would bring some satisfaction to the family and show the public the compelling, very, very strong case prosecutors had. Um, the evidence would include um, surveillance video showing Markov um, in the Boston Hotel where Miss Brisman was killed and a hollowed out copy of the medical textbook Gray's Anatomy where authorities said Markov stashed the gun he used to kill Miss Brisman. And then Julissa and the other victims were memorialized with engraved stones in the garden near the Massachusetts State House. Um, a family friend read a statement from Miss Guzman that said, with the passage of time and hearing about Philip's suicide, I could verify that my angry feelings were totally justified, that with this action this man ratified his cowardice, incapable of facing justice from humanity here on earth, but he can never escape God's justice. It said, um, Miss Guzman's comments were presented instead of a victim impact statement that may have come at trial. And then afterward, Miss Guzman said that she had nothing to say to um, Philip's relatives because they weren't at fault, but was she had been given the opportunity to speak directly to the man accused of killing her daughter. Um, she said, I would have asked him, why did you take my daughter's life? Why hurt her when she had never hurt anyone and was always good to others and was always helping people? Uh, Miss Guzman said she wanted Philip to face justice and doesn't know if he committed suicide because of his conscience. She also said she was shocked when she found out that um, Philip was a medical student she had also studied medicine and couldn't understand why anyone in a field designed to help people would cause pain. After Ms. Guzman's statement, the family announced the creation of a foundation in um, Ms. Brisman's name dedicated to helping girls and young women. The family said Julissa had been, um, again, as previously said, um, completing her education to become a substance abuse counselor. 
And the family attorney, um, Juna Perkins, said a Craigslist attorney had contacted the family about helping with out the found out helping out with the foundation and on april 13th of 2009 um, philip responded to an ad on craigslist under the erotic services section the category would later be changed to adult services in the wake of the craigslist killer's murder and then later craigslist removed adult services from the platform altogether the classified ads website later took down the section which law enforcement officials said was a conduit for prostitution and other illegal activity. Um, a company official told federal lawmakers that Craigslist had no plans to reopen the section, but said people seeking to advertise sexual services would simply migrate to other internet sites. Um, Philip uh, Markoff left a tragic legacy behind that went far beyond the hurt experienced by the victim's families. Um, Markov had been one of the many murderers using online dating to trap escorts. And then it was said um, in 2016, it was estimated that over 100 murderers had used Craigslist to, uh, personals to murder prostitutes. And the Craigslist killer became the catalyst to shutting down part of the Craigslist personals for erotic services in 2011 before new legislation removed the personal section entirely in 2018. Um, it was said, there's a barely a day that goes by that I don't see at least one report, sometimes two or three or five crimes linked to Craigslist, said Peter Zolman, the founding principal of Advanced Interactive Media Group, which reports on online marketplace companies. Um, Zolman's organization runs a blog that catalogs Craigslist killings and according to their um, account, or according to their account, there have been at least 131 Craigslist murders since 2007. Craigslist has always created an ethos of anonymity, Zolman says, and a Wild West atmosphere. And um, for all the Craigslist murders, it was said there were some signs of a slowdown. After 83 documented murders between 2007 and 2015, Zolman's group tracked 49 in the six years since, which was a slight decline. Zolman said, I'm happy to say that the last few years there have been far, few, far fewer killings reported as linked to Craigslist, um, crediting in part the elimination of the casual encounters and dating sections of the website. Um, he said, of course, part of it might just be diverted traffic. Um, usage of Craigslist has gone down, Zolman says, and that um, people are using different apps. And um, so it's definitely the internet can be scary, especially when you don't know who you're meeting and um, certain scenarios can be seen as more high risk situations. Um, it's good to take precautions and let people know where you're going and um, to try and meet in public places if you can, if you do meet people. And um, unfortunately, that's the world that we live in now, just that it can be um, with using the internet so much and um, with dating sites, you never know who you're gonna meet. So um, definitely, I hope you guys stay safe out there. Um, thank you for taking the time to listen about this case. And um, yes, please uh, stay safe out there. Thank you, have a great day.